Electroconvulsive therapy, also known as ECT, was invented in 1938 by two Italian psychiatrists, Hugo Schuletti and Lucio Bini. It was found to be effective in treating multiple psychiatric illnesses, most commonly depression. ECT involves applying two metal electrodes to the head. These electrodes are either applied bilaterally with one electrode on each side of the head or unilaterally with the electrodes on the same side of the head. Once the electrodes are applied, the patient is delivered an electrical current that lasts no longer than 60 seconds. The electrical current causes a seizure but is controlled with medications so the body doesn't spasm. Before the electrical current is delivered, the patient is given an anaesthetic so they are unaware of the ECT and a muscle relaxant to help prevent the seizure and injury. ECT treatments are usually given two to three times a week for three to four weeks for a total of six to 12 treatments. Treatments vary from person to person depending on the severity of the mental illness. Most people usually notice results within two to three treatments, although it is not known how ECT actually treats depression and other mental illnesses. What health professionals do know is that chemical parts of brain function are changed before and after that ECT occurs. Electroconvulsive therapy is a procedure used to treat severe depression. Severe depression can involve in detachment from reality, a desire to commit suicide or refusal to eat. Depression can lead to a person experiencing intense feelings of sadness for long periods of time, and this can be for no apparent reason. ECT is used when repression doesn't improve with medications or other treatments. It's suspected that the pathology of depression may involve having too many connections between certain brain areas, which is also known as hyperconnectivity. When conducting an ECT on a consumer of depression, it shows significant decreases in connectivity between certain parts of the brain. Research found that ECT treatment dampened the connections within and radiates out from a region called the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex in the left side of the brain. This section is known to be associated with negative thoughts, anxiety and criticism, which all play major roles during depression. ECT can also be used to treat bipolar disorder, which is another mood disorder. The treatment for this should commence during the depressive phase. Although it was originally invented to treat schizophrenia, it is much more effective for major depressive disorders. And if it is used for schizophrenia, it is usually used for a subtype called catatonia. Catatonia is a condition where the patient may not speak, experience odd and, unus and unusual rigid movements, and appear motionless. This treatment is usually used for those not responding to their antipsychotics. ECT is not commonly used for schizophrenia. Non-psychiatric medical conditions, which include patients with Parkinson's disease, can also receive effective treatment from electroconvulsive technology. Once your doctor or psychiatrist has recommended that you would benefit from a course of ECT, you will be given a booklet outlining information about the treatment, legal rights and entitlements under the Mental Health Act 1986. You will have the opportunity to ask any questions you may have. The information must be explained in a language or manner that you can understand and is also available in a number of languages online at www.health.vic.gov.au forward slash mental health. There is also a telephone information line you can call to listen to a recorded summary of some of the key information in the booklet. The lines are open 24 hours a day. When undergoing treatment, you should be treated with dignity and respect and be protected from abuse. If you are unsatisfied about any part of your treatment or care, you have the right to complain. You can talk to anyone looking after you at the hospital or complain directly to your health service commissioner or to the chief psychiatrist. It is also your right to get a second opinion about whether you need ECT. Your case manager or psychiatrist can arrange a second opinion from within the mental health service or they can help you choose your own psychiatrist. A consumer can only give informed consent once they fully understand what's involved with ECT. This includes the benefits and discomforts that are involved, as well as beneficial alternative treatments. The consumer must understand their legal rights and other entitlements. This means if you are able to give informed consent, you have the right to refuse. 
If you agree to have ECT but then change your mind, it is your right to withdraw your consent at any time and the treatment will be stopped unless your psychiatrist believes you are not able to give informed consent. This means your psychiatrist also has the right to allow ECT to be given to you without informed consent. If this happens, your psychiatrist will explain to you why the treatment is urgent. St John of God have stated on their website a list of case studies for mental health patients. Listed is 30-year-old Jeremy Black's story. His suicidal thoughts stemming from his depression brought him to try ECT. He is now motivated and has plans in order to deal with his suicidal tendencies. Another patient, Lucy, who was a 30-year-old, had her first episode of depression at the young age of 20, which is one of the most common age groups for individuals suffering from depression. She states, when you're depressed, people often say they wish they had a magic wand to make you better. Well, ECT was my magic wand. Due to depression, Lucy was unable to function properly or concentrate. She tried many different therapies, including cognitive behavioural therapy, group therapy and counselling. As soon as her first treatment commenced, she felt more present in the room. This is a huge improvement and although she did suffer minor side effects such as jaw tightening, she believes it was worth it. She feels as if the induced seizure rewired her brain. There, these are only two examples of many people who undergo treatment and believe it has saved their life. However, elective convulsive therapy has its pros and its cons. ECT is still to this day not fully understood. There is a heavy stigma placed upon this therapy due to some people believing that this intervention is more of an instant recovery rather than other long-term therapies. Some side effects of this therapy are actually operated related to do with in correct administration and misuse of equipment. Some common side effects can include headaches, muscle aches and or nausea following their treatment. There is also a slight chance the patient is at risk of cutting their tongue or hurting their jaw because the therapy can cause the jaw to contract. Other possible side effects can include memory loss, which is one of ECT's greatest concerns. This includes short-term memory loss and forgetting past events. Some patients have also said they have felt as if their whole personality has changed. ECT is a safe and effective treatment if other medications aren't treating the patient's mental illness effectively. Other reasons as to why ECT might be the intervention of choice for a patient is if their side effects from antidepressants become too severe or if your life is in danger because you aren't eating or drinking enough, if you are having suicidal thoughts or if ECT has worked in the past. In conclusion, ECT is a very safe and effective treatment for those who suffer from a mental illness. Although very safe and effective, it should be used as a last resort and thoroughly discussed with health professionals as it is very invasive. When discussing with the health professional, it is important to weigh up the pros and cons to decide if ECT is an appropriate course of action for you. As mental illness is highly stigmatised in the community, unfortunately so too is ECT. This can create a barrier between the patient and treatment and as a result, through time, ECT has been less used. It has and hopefully will continue to change people's lives with mental illness forever.